my sculptures are mostly made using steel. I often make a sort of steel armature or framework. And from there, it means I can build on and make solid sections. Um, and I do that using paper mache, and then I make my own hand-generated paper pulp. I'm here to research an exhibition that I'm curating, and I'm also attempting to write um, a piece of writing that will go in the exhibition text. The exhibition is called These Mad Hybrids, and they're centered around these unknown ceramic sculptures made by the late painter, John Hoyland. The ceramics are amazing. They're they're odd, they're kind of clunky, they're bigger than you might expect. They lived in his studio since he made them in 1994. And we're situating the Hoyland ceramics among 10 contemporary sculptors. Basically, the, so the Hoyland ceramics were only exhibited once in 1994, and they were shown at the CCA galleries in London and to accompany the exhibition there was a small pamphlet showing some coloured photos of the ceramics. He says that making sculpture is harder than it looked, which I think is a really nice expression and something that I'm, I'm looking at through my writing and my research here about what that idea that sculpture looks potentially easy but what makes it difficult or hard to grasp. Um, and the other thing I liked is he says that he enjoyed the freedom to try anything and in particular the unexpected results with some of the colour. And that's also an avenue that I've been researching here, thinking about colour and sculpture. And interestingly, I've got this book here, which is uh, something I pulled out from the library. It's called The Colour of Sculpture. And it's really interesting because it talks about almost our fear or rejection of understanding sculpture as being coloured. Um, even though we know that, for instance, Greek sculptures were coloured, but it's as if we refuse to believe that they might be anything other than white. So I find the kind of lack of colour in sculpture quite curious. And then the last couple of things that Hoyland says in the pamphlet is that he wanted to indulge in the possibility of introducing irony and even humour into the sculptures. And irony and humour is again a, a really interesting theme, I think, and something that I've been researching since I've come here. First of all, what the difference is between irony and humour in art, and how artists or sculptors might employ those two things in their work. And most important, what that does to viewing the work or how we see it. And thinking of sculpture as a, as a joke, which is often durational, is quite an interesting idea of thinking about sculpture not as a static object, but something that has movement. And then the final statement he says is that he describes his work as these mad little hybrids, which is where we have got the exhibition title from. Um, and hybridity is an absolutely vast <laughs> subject and one that I think I'm only going to touch the sides in the time I'm here but I'm interested in all of the possibilities that hybridity means within sculpture. First of all, in terms of it as a classification and how artists play with lots of different mixtures of what sculpture can be through painting or performance or design, but also in a subject matter that hybridity now isn't just the fusing of human and animal or human and machine. It could be um, all of those things mixed up and intertwined with one another. And finally, how hybridity could also be a sort of material investigation that now we see sculptors using so many different types of materials and ways of doing things that everything has become a sort of mad hybrid. I was reading a lot of Philida Barlow's writing and she often told in accounts of her time at art school being taught by George Fullard and Elizabeth Frink and them telling her about a French sculptor called Germain Richier who said that clay is a hysterical material and the more you use it the more it screams which I thought was such a nice quote because Hoyland is working with ceramics so it's really nice how that can happen but I didn't really know that much about her and then the library means you can really get stuck into these unexpected deviance. <laughs> I feel like I'm gathering so much material, you know, not just for the writing for this exhibition text, but for my own work. And I really feel like I'll go back to the studio with such an enriched vocabulary 
thanks to the library and the archive and all the things I've seen.